What's your name, sir? Are you trying to Consider this a lawful order. This is your last warning. You can exit the perimeter and be on your way. Sir, at this time we do need to leave. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I've seen pedestrians wander through. This way. I just saw one a few minutes ago. This way. They've all been asked to leave, sir. Most of them have badges and allow them in here. Really? What are these badges look like? Keep walking. What are these badges look like? Keep walking. What do these badges look Keep like? Keep walking, sir. You what need do to these leave badges the look like? You need to leave the area, please, sir. Come on. Let's go. I'll do it. Come on. Go. Sir, you need to quit touching me. I have my hand out. That's all I'm doing. Place. I'm walking with my hand out. You're walking with your hand out. You need to keep walking down the sidewalk. Sure, time to leave. <coughs> sir, this is your official order to not come back. Stay behind the barricades. If you come back within the barricades, you will go to jail. Well, how come we don't have barricades over there? Do you understand, sir? Why do you it's not yes have barricades no? over there? It's a yes or no. Do you understand? Why do you not, not have sir? barricades over there? I'm not playing We're your not games. here to answer your if question. If you come back, you go to jail. Have a good day. Better set up some barricades. Thank you. Sir, if you come back in the area, you go to jail. It's that simple. <laughs> All right, interesting dash cam video there at the start. Anyway, let's go ahead and move to the meat of this video. Uh, let's first off look at the police documents that I managed to get with my public records request on my case. Now, if you noticed right here at the start, it says AMC 845010A3B is the actual law I was charged with, and that is a municipal code, not a state law, which makes it a very interesting thing. So let's go ahead and look at what does the law say. Now, if you look at this part here, it is part of the actual trespass ordinance within the Anchorage municipality. A, a person commits the crime of criminal trespasses if the person, three, knowingly enters or remains on public premises or property or in a public vehicle, B, after the person has been requested to leave by someone with the apparent authority to do so. But, that that's the charge I was put on. But here's the, uh, the linchpin, why it fell apart, it would not really handle well in court. If you look at C, it's an affirmative defense to prosecution under subsection A3, which is where I was charged, that the person was engaged in legitimate expression of the First Amendment, no, of First Amendment freedoms and expression did not obstruct or delay access or exit to and from property or intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly intimidate users, residents, or occupants of uh, the property or occur in an unreasonable pl time, place, or manner or violate terms of any court order, official permit, municipal ordinance, consent decree, judicial or legal process, or endanger the public welfare or security. So, the deal is, the entire case fell apart with the fact that there is an exception in the municipal code that they're trying to charge me with, the subsection C, for First Amendment activities, which, freedom of the press, is in the First Amendment. 
So we're looking at why the case fell apart. Now, some of you say, oh, well, you're on a private company's uh, lot there. Well, the thing is, is they probably couldn't get me under the state code for trespass because the police possibly did not have the proper authority to trespass people off of that lot. Also, the other clincher about that property is it's partially public access. If you go and look at it on the Google Maps, the eastern side of that parking lot is public parking, while the western side is for ConocoPhillips employees only. So that brings us around to, did they have the proper authority and stuff like that? So pretty much the case fell apart right in their face after the arrest because they didn't have the proper grounds to do a proper trespass in the first place from the looks of it, of course. The other part is the security part. If you look at endanger the public C5, endanger the public welfare or security, how was I specifically harming security when we have seen in parts one, two, and also with the dash cam uh, footage at the beginning, and you also can see the full footage uh, on my channel, that there was another, I mean, people wandering in and out that did not have supposedly quote unquote badge, proper badges to be there in the first place. So it was an improper perimeter on top of that. Now, if we go ahead and, I mean, go back to the police reports, the police report done by Officer Laporte, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly, last name, and this part is quite the interesting. Myself and other officers immediately approached him and told him that he had been previously trespassed. He began to say it was clearly marked and this wasn't clearly marked and this parking lot belonged to a company. Well, here's the thing. I did not say that until after I was placed in handcuffs. In fact, this statement comes before I explained to him that he was under arrest for trespassing and another officer placed him in handcuffs. No, I, I pointed out that this was parking lot was owned by or controlled by Conoco Phillips, who actually who owns the property is actually Arco when I looked it up underneath the property database uh, for Anchorage property, well, tax information. But nonetheless, they most likely did not have proper permission from Arco to be able to trespass. And since the way the parking lot is set up, people can walk through the parking lot without any impediment. There's no uh, barriers or anything like that to stop people from going in and out for the most part. It just prevents people from parking there. And, I mean, literally right next to it, the other half of that parking lot area is open parking for the public in general. So, I mean, that's how that situation is laid out. So, I'm wondering, did they think they had the proper authority to trespass off there? What was the agreement between Arco, ConocoPhillips, and the Anchorage, the city of Anchorage for using that area? The other part that I find interesting, it is stated that the command post was set up there and it was staging area for all APD details with no access allowed by the public and officers posted to prevent non-official personnel from entering. Now, the thing is, is when you go and set up a perimeter like that, usually, in most cases, you tape it off with some sort of crime scene tape or whatever. When you set up a secure perimeter where people are not supposed to be clearly going into, you don't just put an officer there just to tell people that they can't go there. No, you make a clearly defined border saying you can't cross this point. That's what crime scene tape is there for when in the back of vehicles. There was several police officer vehicles there, plus command center. You can't tell me that there was not any crime scene tape available to tape that area off. In fact, I even have on video in part two where they have a spot where part of the sidewalk is taped off by the Alaska Club so people can still access the Alaska Club but couldn't go past that point on that sidewalk on the north side of 8th Street. So, it, it, clearly, there was incompetence in setting up what is supposed to be a secure perimeter. Now, the most damning part when it comes to their testimony is when you skip to the last uh, one on the uh, list of reports I have. You guys will be able to access these also. I got them uploaded. Um, is I'm not going to pronounce his last name because I'm no, I'm going to butcher it. Officer Thomas R. 
who states, The parking lot was closed to civilian traffic as it was command post for the presidential protection detail. Blank walked into the parking lot and started to walk towards me with the phone in hand and video camera in another. I walked towards Blank and told him he needed to be, stay on the sidewalk. Blank continued onto the parking lot and stopped without turning or leaving the area. Now, here's the problem with that. No, actually, if you go back and review the video, I did turn and move back a couple feet and then stopped and asked him, confirming how was what what they were giving a lawful order when clearly other people were moving in and out of the perimeter, clearly not being properly vetted. Now, let's see here. Blank continued into the... Let's see. Um, Blank started asking why the border was not clearly marked. Myself and Officer A. Roberts explained that we were telling him where the border was and he needed to leave or he would be arrested. I learned from other officers on the scene that Blank had been warned repeatedly not to encroach on secured area or he would be charged with trespassing. The problem was the area was not secure. The reason why I was there asking questions is because the area was not secure. I do take security very seriously, and when it's not done being done properly, I'm going to stop and ask questions. Especially when you have a VIP as high, I mean, as important as the president going to be there, and you say that we're going to make a secure area, but don't advertise that people can't go into it and don't enforce it properly where they don't vet everybody going in and out of that supposedly secured area. That was the major problem. They didn't have proper barriers, markings, entry control. These are all kinds of things. If you work, if you're a server in the military, you learn these things just trying to, uh, going through basic on how to set up proper security measures and how to search vehicles and all that stuff for stuff that's going in and out of those secure areas. The problem was is I did not see that, especially for that area, which still had active businesses and people going in and out. It's like, Something's not right here. A rule for me, but not for everyone else. That was the major problem with that uh, with this entire issue. Now, the most common and interesting thing you're going to see throughout the police reports is they constantly report, repeat, it's a lawful order. The problem was, it doesn't seem like it was a lawful order in the first place. Especially when there's other people going in and out of supposedly a secured area. Now, the thing is, is the press and anybody else is allowed where the general public is allowed to go. And as we've seen in multiple videos, that the general public was going in and out of these areas to some extent. And so, especially over there in the one area I was supposedly first trespassed off of, which was supposedly their extended perimeter. And if you go back and look, to my knowledge, uh, as this video is being recorded, that the websites are still up. And from these screenshots here, you can see exactly where the no pedestrian zones are, where the no tra vehicle traffic zones are at, for around the Denina Center. And no way do they have the alleyway where I walked down, or the parking lot I walked into to ask the officers questions about What's going on with the security? Why do you have an extended perimeter? Why is it not communicated out on your own website with the press and all the other news outlets? And why are you not properly vetting the other people that are going in and out? 